Welcome back. Welcome to our second unit here in AP Calculus. In this unit, we're going to explore the concept of the derivative. The derivative is ultimately the driving force of all of our calculus class, um, both the first semester and derivatives, which focus on derivatives and application of the derivative, and the second semester, the integral, which is you know, the inverse operation to the derivative. And um, the first thing you have to do is take the antiderivative. So you really have to understand the concept of derivative. You watched your first video um, relating you um, saying Bolt and his speed or his velocity at any given time. Um, and now we're going to start building on this concept. And for the next day or so, we're going to still be working with limits, as you see right here. Uh, and I'll get through these concepts in just a minute. And then quickly, starting uh, in our next video and then just beyond, we're going to have all these different techniques of finding derivative. And they have all kinds of different shortcuts. Uh, you will have a little bit of limits to work out in this unit. Not too much. Most of it's going to be the shortcut stuff and being able to master the different techniques of finding derivatives and then simplify find them algebraically. A couple concepts you have to understand. First of all, um, we're going to be talking about derivatives as they relate in this first section to tangent lines and rates of change. And um, in this first one, in this first concept, we're going to talk about tangent lines. Um, in, in to understand a tangent line, you understand a secant line. A secant line, or what we refer to as a secant line, is simply when um, uh, we're going to connect we're going to connect two pieces of our graph. So we're just going to connect two points on our graph. So if I was just looking at a secant line, say to a parabola, let's just say we have a just simple parabola. If I were to connect this point, let's call that A, and I were to connect, oopsie, that point right there, let's call that B. Uh, that's what we call our secant line. That line that drew in there, that's what we call our secant line. So that's AB is our secant line. Um, to find the slope of that secant line, it's just your slope formula. So it's the change of the y value over the change of the x value. Now, when we start taking a look at derivatives, we're going to relate that to our tangent lines. The tangent line to a curve, it only intersects the curve in exactly one point. And let's just take our same parabola. You're familiar with that. And I'm going to put another point down here. Let's put a point down here. And let's draw a line that's tangent to that graph. And when I draw that tangent line, it's going to touch the graph in exactly one spot. And the slope of that tangent line, the slope of that tangent line, is going to be the value of this limit of the difference quotient that we learned about in our, our, our summer uh, work. And, um, the limit that we learned about in our last unit. And the slope of that line, the slope of that tangent line, is going to relate to the derivative um, in our next section when we get into, our, into the definition of derivative. And that's going to be conceptually, each one of these things are related to the derivative. Right now, we're starting it out by theory-wise. Let's take a look at an example of this tangent line stuff. We do have to work out limits in this first section. Let's take a simple equation like x squared. That's what I was just drawing. And find the equation of the line tangent to the graph at negative 2, 4. Um, so the first thing I need to do, the only thing I need to do is, um, is to find the slope of the tangent line. Um, I'm going to put this equation in point slope form. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And in doing so, in, in looking at that slope, um, what, or, or in looking at this line, the only thing I don't know here is I already know x and y, so I just need to find what is my m variable, what is, what is my slope variable. Um, so to do that, I had to work out that limit. I had to work out that limit from my previous screen. Um, so when I work out that limit, I'm going to set up the limit. I'm going to set up the limit as h approaches 0 of f of, sorry, my pen's kind of bleeding here, x plus h. That should be h minus f of x over h. And then, and then here comes our algebra stuff. You're going to hear me say over and over again, in this concept of derivative, you're going to hear me talking about how the algebra is really what gets everybody in trouble. Um, so let's take a look at that. Um, if I plug in x plus h into x squared, I'm going to take the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h squared minus x squared over h. Now it becomes algebra simplifying. I need to get this h to drop out so that I can find this limit. Expand this binomial out, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared over h. The x squareds will drop. 
I can divide out of h here. So I'm going to take the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h, which when it, when it goes to 0, it's just left with 2x. So 2x is the, uh, the equation or the function that represents the slope of every line that's tangent to this graph x squared. And at my, my specific point is at negative 2. So if I plug in negative 2 right here, I can find a slope of negative 4. And then the equation of my line tangent to the graph is y minus 4 equals negative 4 times x minus 2. Uh, sorry, x plus 2. It's the opposite there. This part right here, this limit stuff, all this algebra stuff, this is the part that will become a lot easier once we get into the definition of derivative in our, our next section. Another concept that is related to, oopsie, sorry. Another concept that is related to the derivative is velocity. And we look at two different things. We look at average velocity, which you'll see every once in a while on the AP exam. And then we look at the velocity at a point. And this is what we were talking about when Newton was in, in the Khan Academy video when he was talking about Usain Bolt's velocity at any given point. He was establishing this. And he was letting this interval go to zero, basically just let this change go to zero. Um, the average velocity, though, however, is the distance or divided by time. So if I was going back to that video and I re referred to that, I said, okay, well, he ran 100 meters in 9.85 five seconds, and you take, you know, 9.85, uh, excuse me, 100 meters divided by 9.85 seconds, and that would be his average velocity over that time. Now, if I just chose one point, let's say I chose the point where he was halfway there, and I wanted to know how fast he was running, I would have to take this limit again. Same limit as the previous one, this is the velocity at any given time. This is you driving past that speed camera on uh, Wilson, Bo or Wilson Lane, right there by, uh, by Pyle. And that takes your picture because you're going, you know, 40 miles an hour, and the speed limit is 25. And then they get that light little ticket in the in the mail. It's your velocity at any given time, right at that snapshot when you pass that speed camera. Let's look at an example of this. Um, so the sandbag is dropped. We're given the position function by negative 16 t squared plus 512. The 512 is how far I'm dropping it from. Okay. And I want to find the velocity at a seconds. And that's going to be just working out that limit at any given a value. And then I put in 2 for it. And then the part c will be related to that. So let's just find that limit first of all. I'm going to take the limit as h approaches 0. Of It's going to be, in this case, s of a plus h minus s of a over h. I'm going to put a plus a in for t right here, so it's negative 16 times a plus h squared minus, um, oh, excuse me, I forgot something there. I, I've got to include this uh, plus 512 minus negative 16 a squared plus 512, that's the original function over h. Uh, square this out, simplify it, all that stuff, and, and if you have trouble with this, let me know in class tomorrow. But I'm going to end up taking the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 32 a minus 16 h, which when you take that limit is then negative 32 a. What that means is the velocity of that sandbag at any given time is negative 32 times the a value. a is an arbitrary vari variable. So if I wanted to know what the velocity was at 2 seconds, I'm simply going to put 2 in there for a, and I get negative 64. And in this particular case, it's feet per second, I believe. Yeah, feet per feet above ground. Mm -hmm. So it's feet per second. This last one, the instant, the instant it strikes the ground, we had to find out when it strikes the ground. So I had to say, well, when is s of t equals 0? I had to find that t value. So I set negative 16 t squared plus 512 equal to 0. And I solve that. When I solve that, I get t equals, when I solve that, I got t equals 4 times the square root of 2. And then to know what the velocity is the instant it hit the ground, I got to take that 4 square root of 2 and put it in there for a. So in this last one, it's going to be negative 32 times 4 square root of 2. And when I work that out, I got negative 128 square root of 2, and again, feet per second. We don't use the calculator much in this class, so you really have to be able to do all this stuff mentally. Um, 
So anyways, you can kind of gauge where you are with that. The last concept that's related to this uh, first part of the derivative is the instantaneous rate of change. So we've had three concepts. We've had the slope of the line tangent to the graph. We've had the velocity of a particle at any given point. And now we have instantaneous rate of change. And the all three of those things are related to the derivative. You're going to see in our next concept, our next video, when I define the derivative, they refer to all three of those concepts. You find the derivative, find the derivative. When you see this stuff on a test, when you see it on a quiz, when you see it on the AP exam, they say find the slope of a tangent line, derivative. Find the velocity, derivative. So it's all derivative-based stuff. Um, the average rate of change is, again, the slope. It's the slope, OK? And then instantaneous rate of change, that's where we're going to take that limit. It's uh, the same idea as the previous couple of concepts. Let's look at one where I, I have a, a, a voltage thing. So any resistance R, we have I equals 100 divided by R. R is increasing. Find the instantaneous rate of change with respect to R um, at any given time and then at 20 ohms. So again, we're going to find the instantaneous rate of change in general. And then we're going to plug in the 20. So we're going to set up the limit as h approaches 0 of f of r plus h minus f of r over h. We're going to go ahead and put that in, put it, put all the values in. Limit as h approaches 0 of 100 divided by r plus h minus 100 over r over h. Um, I need to do this subtraction. The common denominator is r times r plus h. I can drop that down here, uh, simplify it. So now this next step is just a bunch of simplifying stuff. And what I'm going to end up with is, let me go over here and do it. h approaches 0 of 100r minus 100 times r plus h. And then over h, that's that guy. And then multiply by the common denominator here. So it's r plus h times r. When I simplify this numerator, I end up with um, negative 100 times h over that denominator. Then these h's will cancel. And now I can let h go to 0. When h, when take the limit as h goes to 0, that becomes 0. This becomes r times r. So then the resistance at any given time is negative 100 divided by r squared. And that's part A right there. That's part A. Then to get the resistance when it's 20 ohms, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and put in 20 for R squared, and I end up with negative 1 fourth. It's negative 100 over 400. All right, so these limits, this first section, you're going to have to work out tons of limits. Anytime you see velocity, instantaneous rate of change, all that stuff, you just work out limits, limits, limits. Um, and then it, it will get easier because the, short, the shortcuts are going to come in in our next video when we get into definition. And once we do that, it, it does become significantly easier. So good luck on this first assignment.